welcome. And I just wanted to set the scene a little, if I haven't already, but um, three-year anniversary of your, your role uh, next week. First up, I wanted to get a sense of how, in, in this environment, you've had a big year, but during a crisis like this, or a, a, a self-initiated crisis, how do you... <laughs> I'm right there, aren't I? You've got, is it easy when you've got control of it, when you've initiated it? Um, well, this year, you're right, was, was, was a year, if, if we look back one year to nearly the date of the grounding of the fleet, mm -hmm. we had the A380 incident, which started a year of crisis for us. At the A380 incident, if people remembered, uh, we had an explosion of an engine of an aircraft coming out of Singapore. Uh, it was probably one of the most serious incidents we've had on an air, a Qantas aircraft. It made us have to ground the Qantas A380 fleet, first time we've grounded a fleet mm. in our history. Then we had, if you look through the year, we had the volcanoes, um, a, a mm. volcanic activity uh, from Chile that had a big impact on air travel here. We had the earthquake, tsunamis, floods in Queensland, cyclone, uh, snow in the UK. We counted in total that our crisis executive met 16 times during the year. 16 different crises had to be, had to be uh, managed. And then, of course, it ended the, that full year uh, with, with the uh, grounding of the entire fleet. But I don't see it as a self-inflicted mm -hmm. activity. I see it as something that uh, was something that was forced on us because of the industrial action that was being taken place uh, by these three unions over an extended period mm -hmm. that had resulted in the loss of confidence of our core customer base, which is the business travel. Mm -hmm. And what's happened since then, now it's going to binding arbitration. We have certainty, certainty for our customers, mm -hmm. certainty for our employees and our shareholders, and we're seeing the forward bookings dramatically improve as a consequence right. of that certainty being brought back, yep. and people are coming back to Qantas. And we have to convince people, and we have a long way to go, that the only way of actually ensuring job security for as many of the 35,000 people mm -hmm. as we can in Qantas is to have a successful business. Mm -hmm. Personally, I've always been very good at compartmentalising everything. And yeah, now, how, what do you mean? How do you do that? <laughs> it's, it's, uh, you just, you just, it's probably back to, maybe it's back to the problem solving background, physics, mathematics uh, that I came from, where you say, you get so focused on one particular item, you block everything else out around it. So when you're, when you're dealing with industrial relations, you're dealing with industrial relations and you don't think of anything else. When you're dealing with fleet for the next 20 years, you're focusing in on that and all of the issues around it. Mm -hmm. And you can block out, you have to block out the IR and the planning the long-term uh, plans for the business. And then when you get home, you switch off completely and you just focus um, on relaxing, watching TV, listening to music. And, and I actually can easily switch off how do you find the courage, is the way I've interpreted this, to make the decisions that you've had to make? There's no other company that has the history like Qantas, that has the reputation around the world like Qantas. And then when you get, um, you, you, you get this amazing job of being CEO of this great company, the one thing you want to do is actually do the right thing by by the company and leave a legacy that ensures Qantas is going to be successful for the future. Mm -hmm. So that determination is top of the list. Mm -hmm. And that means you always will do the right thing. Mm -hmm. No matter how tough it seems at the time, you have to make the right call. And if you fundamentally believe it's the right call, make the call and make sure you do the right thing by the company. Because mm -hmm. the worst thing I can do after I leave Qantas is have looked back and say, I wish I did that. That was of the best interest in the companies, mm -hmm. and I didn't do it. I didn't have the courage to do it. That would be failure in my mind. In, in this environment, what, what are some reflections on leadership that you learned? What did you learn about the way and, and think about the way you led the organisation? And how do you motivate the people that you have to motivate to do the job that you decide is um, the right path? Well, I, th I think a motivation of the team, for me what's always very important is if you get good people around you and you always select, I think, uh, the best people that you can for the roles that are out there. And I've got an amazing team of Qantas, amazing group of individuals that are superb at the tasks that they do. And the best thing you can do is let them, give them the framework of what they should be doing within their job. Um, give them support, uh, give them advice, give them coaching when it's needed, but you don't try and do the job for them. 
let people get off and let them do the, the roles that they need to do. But you were very visible as well, so yeah. that, was that a conscious choice? Because that, that was seemed to be quite important. Well, we're, we're, we're always very, we've always got a very good, I think, a PR plan on this. Yeah. CEO, CEO can't hide. And CEOs that try and, and you know, get other people to go out there and lieutenants yeah. to talk about these issues, I think are dodging their responsibility. When the tough decisions are out there and the CEO needs to front them, they have to be out there. So Jalal Chami from Alpha Farm wants to know, did you always want to be a, a CEO? Was that something you thought of, thought of or does anyone ever think about that? I don't know. But if not, when did you decide that was a goal that you wanted to focus on? It's funny enough because I think the first, first recollection I have when I started working in Aer Lingus, I came into an airline not because of the excitement of the airline, but I think, as you, as you mentioned earlier, because of the, of the maths, it was an operations research analyst which was building mathematical models around, uh, around the aviation problems like queuing or overbooking. And that's what I spent the first few years doing. And after three years in that role, I suddenly had the, the smell of the jet kerosene. I loved aviation. Mm -hmm. And I gave myself the goal at that stage to be an airline CEO before I was 40. And I became an airline. I became the airline CEO of Jetstar when I was 36. So I just got there, you know. So it was. We believe this company is a forward-thinking company, but sometimes it's not seen that way. It seemed to be in the past. Mm. We had a we had a carrier that created business class. Most people don't know business class didn't exist when Qantas created it. Mm. Well, you know, we've created the first designer aircraft in the A380. The life raft that, that doubles as an escape chute was created by a Qantas employee. This airline has DNA as part of its, uh, uh, innovation as part of its DNA. Mm -hmm. So that forward thinking is going to be something for, really important going forward. The question I find is that there's a, a dissonance between, we, lo we like to think of Qantas as the national carrier, the flag yeah. carrier, um, yet people don't, seem prepared to pay the money, the, the premium that's associated with the airline and with that safety and all those, those brand meanings that you've just described. So the, 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 they're, is, they're judging it based on the, on the price of their air. The, the, there is a brand premium for Qantas and it does exist. Domestically, yeah. the brand premium is there over Virgin and over Jetstar. And people do on the same routes, you know, Melbourne, Sydney, you could get a $39 airfare with Jetstar and you'll pay over $100 as the lead in airfare and Qantas, and people will pay it. So there is a brand premium that's there for this amazing brand. And that brand premium domestically is such that it covers the cost-based differential, because mm. Qantas' cost base domestically is also ahead of Jetstar and Virgin. Unfortunately, internationally, the brand premium is not big enough to cover the cost base disadvantage. That's why last year we lost over $200 million on the international business. So we know that there, there is a limit to how much people are willing to pay for that. And we can't um, over, overcharge for it because people will not travel with us. And that means we have to get our cost base down to make our international business economic and be able for that to make a profit and not be the drain on us. Because that competitive market is a lot more competitive than it was 20 years ago. A lot of airlines are seen as equally as safe as Qantas. Yeah. A lot of airlines are seen as equally as premium as Qantas. And the pre premium we can get is limited as a consequence of that. Right. We have the opportunity to be an amazing global brand, both in the full service market and in the low cost market with Jetstar and to get those two brands to expand massively, not just in Asia but around the world. And I think that image of Qantas being this global success story, being a global uh, brand in the premium end and the low cost end is something that is achievable and it's something that we can deliver on in the next five years.